Hey guys, Melissa here and welcome to my channel. Now, I don't know if you saw a video I made a couple weeks ago where I made a whimsical chain and I mentioned I wanted to do something with this little Larimar heart and wrap it whimsically to match the whimsical chain I wanted to put it on. So I attempted that, but it just didn't go as planned as I envisioned it in my head. So after fussing with it for quite a while, I ended up just scrapping the design and sticking with what I had come up with to secure the stone here, which doesn't look too bad, I guess. And then I went on and completed the necklace. I have some bead links, some whimsical links, and I went and finished it off with bead links and figure eights. So I would just watch this video for ideas. I would watch it all the way through before actually following it because I do make things and then I scrap it, so. But instead of, so before I scrap the whole video, I decided to show you guys my process. Hopefully you can find some value in it. At least I pared the footage down to like a half hour, so hopefully that's a reasonable amount of time to watch. So if you want to see how I struggled and how I came up with this design, just stay tuned and I'll show you. All right, so let's get started. I have my heart here. Let me just measure it out quick. It's a little over half an inch long and then almost three quarters of an inch wide. And I want to make a framed pendant kind of flowy like these links, which I made in last week's video, which I'll link above. I want it to look whimsical and I want to tie in these links with the pendant and make a whole necklace. So I grabbed some 18 gauge square. I think this would be sturdy enough for my pendant as the frame. Just got to determine how much I need here. Tools and materials I'll link down in the description. Let me get an overall circumference measurement. I'm just going to use some wire here. Get a loose measurement just over two inches. For the frame, I need to pull out enough wire to surround the stone, make a bale, and then come down again for support. I'm gonna pull out 10 inches, pretty much five times as big as my stone. Find my center. And I think I wanna put like a little point to my frame to accentuate that heart shape. I want to leave some space around the heart for some swirly components. I want to keep these angles, but slowly curve these in. So I keep having to pull them out a little bit. Slowly making smaller and smaller. I'm gently curving it. I don't want any harsh angles up in this area. And when you're satisfied with the size and shape, I'm gonna go straight up the middle. Sharpies could be helpful. You can eyeball it, or just mark it like I did. And I'm gonna bring these wires straight up. I would like to have this to have more of a heart shape, but I'm going to try to curve these down. And straighten these back up again. I want to secure my bale area, so I grab some half round 16 gauge, but I'm just going to secure it. I'm not going to wrap the whole bale. So I'm just gonna work off the spool here. And I'm 
just going to put a few wraps on. I'm not even going to make my bail really big. I'm just going to make it big enough to wrap around one of these spirals. And I'm going to go ahead and make a spiral right now. But first I want to make this nice and flat. Eighteen gauge round wire. I'm gonna pull off eight inches. I'm gonna grab a mandrel of some sort. Find your center and start wrapping. A few times around, like that, and then start. Swinging your spirals out farther. If you saw my last video, when I made my links, I had the wires facing the same direction. But for this centerpiece, I'm going to face them the opposite direction like this. Flush cut them and I'm going to spiral my wire this way, the opposite direction compared to these spirals. And do the same on this side. And also keep in mind we need to leave some space on these spirals for jump rings. That looks pretty cute. Let's start curving this bail because I don't want it too big. Let me get this bail secured and then we'll adjust later. center, wrap them around, and bring them down the back again. Try not to twist them up. I'm wrapping it around the frame wire nice and tight now. And do the same to this one. I don't know what's happening with the... <laughs> worry about that guy later. It's kind of getting all out of control. even those up a bit. That guy doesn't look as tight as that one. Try to fix that. All right, let's anchor these. These are in a nice position to hold our stone here. So let's get them anchored down. I think I'm gonna curl them upward this way. So make sure to lock it down nice and tight. I think once around is good. Let me just give it a snip. Can always snip more off later. Make it this guy secured. That's where we're at so far. Now we have to figure out how to secure the front. 18 gauge square looks a little big. I don't have 20 gauge, so I'm gonna use some 21 gauge square. Let me grab a foot, see how far I can get just wrapping it around back and forth. So I'm gonna try to find center here. I'm thinking I wanna like frame the heart somehow at the top to secure it. Let's see what we can do here. First, I want to make an extreme bend. My square wire wants to twist, so I want to try to avoid that. I'm going to wrap it around the front of the stone so it hugs it nicely. I really want these guys to be nice and symmetrical. If they're uneven, it's going to be really noticeable. I should hammer the tops too. Let me go ahead and do that. do here. I'm 
going to alternate here back and forth so I don't get one side tighter than the other. It's too high up, so I'm going to pull them a little bit tighter. It's getting there, but of course it's not totally secure. Turn that through again. some 18 gauge. I'm sure I'll need it to secure this stone better. I'll go grab another 10 inches. I want to swirl it. This, oh boy, that didn't work. <laughs> okay, let's scrap that whole thing. I'm wondering if I take the same heart shape with some 18 gauge square, if I can secure it better, like do it across the top. So let me make a heart shape, find the center of it. Curve it out. Kind of give the center a nice pinch and curve these out evenly. Let me give this a little hammer. I just need to get this stone secure so we can do the fun stuff. Let's give this some shape because our stone isn't flat. This is looking pretty cool. Let me see what happens when I lock it in. Wish me luck. No. No. Turn. 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 A lot of coaxing of the wire. Bring it through. All right, before we go any further on that side, let's go back to the other side. Okay, we went over the top. Over the top. Over the top. Over the top and around the back. Coax it, coax it, coax it. And then back to the front. Okay, I think we're on to something here. Coax this guy around. Coax this guy around. Let's go ahead and bring these guys to the back and lock them down. Then we'll go back to the top and uh, even everybody up. All right. Come on, mister, get back into place. All right, gently shape these guys. There's a lot of adjusting with these type of pendants. Six inches of 18 gauge. I want to secure the bottom. I'll just bring this guy to a point. it through the back just bring it up over the tip of the stone slightly to grab it and keep it secure and then wrap these guys around the frame don't you pop out the top slowly and gently tightening it because it gets out of shape so easy 
should I wrap around the frame? I probably should. That would be so difficult to do. Pushing and pulling. up for some more support. You guys are probably thinking, what the heck are you doing? How are we supposed to follow along? Yeah, I know. I don't know what I'm doing. It's getting there, though. It's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. Just bringing this up, following the flow of the 21 gauge and finishing it off. This thing's gonna need a lot of buffing. That's for sure. This tool is a burnisher. I use it to push metal. It's nice because it'll push metal around without nicking it. It kind of smooths it out at the same time. All right, I still have this extra 20 gauge at the top here. 21 gauge, I should say. This side is higher than that side. I don't like that. This original 21 gauge brace here, I'm gonna try to curve and push and curve around the stone. See the frame in the back. Should be better here. Now it's just a bunch of adjusting. I think my stone is pretty secure. A little more cockeyed than I would like. I'm hoping with all the extra wire we're gonna add to it that it'll hopefully take away from that. Let me take care of these 21 gauges and then I'll move on. Actually, just tie them off. I'm not sure what to do with them. Put them on the way. Hopefully this looks like how I envisioned it and doesn't look like a complete mess. That looks pretty good. I think I would call this a chaos pendant. Not so much whimsical, but chaotic. <laughs> this guy's facing the wrong way. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so I had to take this off camera for a little bit and work on it where I can really see it. The spiral link off here, I want to redo that. But I think it's starting to look the way I envisioned it. I will say it's a little chaotic. It is what it is. So let me make the bail link, which I think the, the middle of the link I'm going to leave straight. But I'm going to use another 8 inches. This is using a lot of sterling silver. Oh, I love how I did that in the center. That works out great. Let's get this on before I make that final spiral. Sure is chaotic. I'm gonna start constructing the necklace here. I'm gonna place a couple jump rings. And I'm gonna close my spiral a little bit to prevent my 
jump rings from sliding. I also grab some complimentary beads. Make some bead links. I'll also use my 18 gauge for the bead links as well. I'm going to make some wrapped loops. some chaos let me tell you all right so I had to scrap that previous design with the spirals I just couldn't get it to look the way I envisioned so I took it off and I kind of like how it is this way so I think I'm gonna leave it like that because I don't know what else to do and I scrapped way too much wire doing this project as it is so I'm just gonna leave it like it is here so I grabbed some little beads I put a couple whimsical links and bead links on either side of this necklace and I think I'm gonna paper it down to just some bead links and figure eights. So I gotta finish this necklace. For these beads I think I'm gonna switch to 20 gauge. Let's make some bead links. Get this necklace done. I'm tired of it. I'm ready to move on. You ever get tired of working on a project where you're like okay enough's enough let's get this done. Time to move on.
All right, so we're at 19 inches long. I think that's plenty long for a necklace like this. So I'm gonna add a little clasp and leave it at that. You can always add more figure eights if needed. My swan clasps are pre-made, so I'm just gonna attach it. Oh yeah, one more thing I like to add to the end of my necklaces is a little dangle. See, these are pre-made head pins where I torch the end of it. I might have a video on that. I'll link it above. Pretty sure I did. If not, I'll make one. So yeah, just make a little wrapped loop. Make a little dangle. Hook it onto the figure eight. Or if you got extender chain, you can put an extender chain on here and stick the, the little dangle off the end of that. So yeah, finishes it off nice. As I tangle it up. So here's the necklace. This is what I'm going with. I polished it up, tried to get all the nicks and scratches out I could, and then shined it up. And then here's the necklace. So thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.